Hi everyone, welcome to Nitrania Game Club. My name is Branislav Berec and you're watching Game in a Nutshell, the series of movies where we explain how to play various board games. Today it will be Gizmos, a beautiful engine building game. Here's the rules. First, prepare the energy dispenser. If the energy spheres don't fall down, shuffle them a little bit in the dispenser. Then prepare the gizmo decks. Shuffle each gizmo deck separately, but before you shuffle the level 3 deck, take 20 gizmos out, because in every game only 16 level 3 gizmos are used. Then draw 4 level 1 gizmo cards and place them face up, 3 level 2 gizmo cards and 2 level 3 gizmos. Then each player gets one of these dashboards. Randomly choose the first player and he will get this dashboard with this uh, brownish background. Each player also gets this starting gizmo and puts it into this file column and also one storage ring. And that's the whole setup and we're ready to go. The game starts with the first player who takes his first turn and then the play moves clockwise. On your turn you must perform one of these depicted actions. When you take a file action, you can choose any of the face-up gizmo cards in the display area and place it into your archive, which is somewhere near your player board. Now, the archive has a limit of how many cards you can store there. The limit is given by this symbol and this number here, so at the beginning of the game it's one card, but when you purchase upgrades later on, you can increase this limit. If your archive is full, you cannot perform the file action. After you move the card into your archive, draw another card and fill in the empty space. When you take the pick action, you can pick one of these six spheres from the dispenser. You can pick any color and place it into your storage ring. Again, there's a limit of how many spheres you can have in this storage ring and you can increase this limit later on during the game. If the storage ring is full, you cannot take the pick action. When you take the build action, you choose one of these face-up cards in the display area or one of your cards from the archive. You pay the cost, which is displayed in a bottom left corner. And then you can add the card into your player dashboard. The cost indicates what color and how many spheres of that color you need to spend. So in this case, you need to spend three yellow spheres. In this case, one red, one black and so on and so forth. On the back of these gizmo decks, you can see that the level 1 cards cost only 1 sphere. Level 2 cards cost 2 or 3 spheres and level 3 cards cost 4 to 7 spheres. So, when you choose a card, you pay the cost to the dispenser and then add the card to your player board. The symbol in the top left corner indicates into which column you place the card. And again, refill the empty space with the card from the corresponding deck. When you build gizmos, you can use these converters to change the color of your spheres in the storage area into another color. We will talk about these converters later in the video. When you take the research action, you choose one of these face-down gizmo decks and then draw this number of cards. Similar to the storage limit and archive limit, the number of cards you can draw can be increased later in the game. You can only choose one of the decks. After you draw the cards, you can look at them, choose one of them and immediately build or archive that card. If you build it, you put it into corresponding column and you have to pay the corresponding price. Then put the remaining two cards at the bottom of the corresponding deck. If for some reason you don't want to or you cannot build or archive any of these three cards, 
you put all of them at the bottom of the corresponding deck. And now the real fun begins. Anytime you perform any of these actions, you trigger all these effects on the card. For example, when I file this card, I perform file action and both these effects trigger immediately. We'll go through all the effects in a minute, but for the purpose of this example, this card tells me that I get to pick one sphere at random, so none of these spheres, but blindly one of the spheres in the dispenser. And that was just the first effect. The second one tells me that I can pick one of these spheres and I choose to pick the red one and because I performed the pick action and I picked the red sphere, I get to pick another one at random. So with one file action, I managed to pick three additional spheres. And that's how you win at Gizmos and that's the best part of Gizmos. It's all about creating all kinds of chain reactions, but every effect can only be triggered once during your turn. End of the game can be triggered in two ways. First, when one of the players builds fourth level 3 gizmo. You can tell it's a level 3 gizmo by this different background. And second, the game end will trigger when someone built already 16 gizmos in total, including the, the starting one. Once that happens, you finish the round so that all players have equal number of turns in the game and then the game ends completely. Each player calculates the final score by adding the values of the victory points in the top right corner of each gizmo card, but not counting cards in the archive, and adding the victory points from the victory point tokens. The player with the most points wins the game. This effect triggers when you play the file action. This effect triggers when you pick the yellow sphere, this one triggers when you pick the, the red or blue sphere. But remember, it can only be triggered once a turn, so you cannot pick the red one, activate the effect and then pick the blue and activate it again. It's not allowed because you can only do it once per turn. Now, this one triggers when you build the yellow building. This one triggers when you build black or red building. This one triggers when you build from the archive. So, when you build this card from the archive, you would trigger both this and this effect at the same time. And this action triggers when you build a second level gizmo. This effect means that you can pick one sphere from the dispenser at random. Now, this is not a pick action. So even if you blind pick this black sphere, it does not trigger this pick effect. Similarly, this effect means that you can pick three spheres at random. This effect allows you to perform one pick action. So you take one of those six visible spheres from the dispenser. This effect allows you to perform two pick actions one after another. This allows you to perform file action and this effect allows you to perform research action. This effect gives you one victory point as a token. This one gives you two victory points as two victory point tokens. There's a bunch of converters in the game. You can use these converters when you build gizmos, but remember you can use each converter only once per turn. The first one lets you convert blue marble into anything else. The second one lets you convert one yellow marble into any other color and then another yellow marble into any other even a different color. The third one lets you use one marble of a specified color to be used as two marbles of the same color when you build gizmos. So for example when building this one I don't need to pay two black marbles, one is sufficient because it counts as two. 
The fourth one allows you to take marble of any color and turn it into a marble of any color. And the last one is basically the same as the third one. So you can treat one marble of a specific color as two marbles when you build gizmos. But here you can use both effects. It is extremely useful when you want to build this kind of generic gizmo. It requires seven spheres, seven marbles of any color. So I can use black one as two, red one as two, so that's two, four, and five, six, seven to build this one. Now, as we already mentioned, these symbols increase your storage limit, archive limit, and the research number. And these two effects allow you to spend one less sphere when you either build from the archive or when you build through the research action. In addition, this effect gives you one sphere discount when you build level 2 gizmo. Finally, there are four special upgrades in the game. These two give you a lot of victory points, but the first one tells you that you are not allowed to perform file action and the second one you are not allowed to perform research action for the rest of the game. This card has the number of victory points equal to the number of spheres in your storage ring and this one gives you uh, as many victory points as you have the victory points in tokens. So basically this card doubles the victory points from the victory point tokens. And that's how you play Gizmos, this beautiful engine building game. If you have any questions, I'll be very happy to answer them. Uh, my name is Branislav Berec, you've been watching Game in a Nutshell, and see you at the next video tutorial.